Hello there. It's me. And I'm back with another answer to the never ending Blues Juniors questions. So, anyway, class is in. I started working on these Blues Juniors when they first came out back here years ago. I've mentioned this before. They had several design issues. One of the first ones I had gotten my hands on had caught fire due to uh, arcing output tubes and so on. So I actually come up with, like I say years ago, my solution for fixing Blues Junior. And I addressed a few of the design problems. Like I said, that was years ago. The uh, date on that is actually 2006 but it was actually originally written a long time before that. So anyway, what we're going to get into here the forum sheeple uh, are constantly asking me about why I change the screen resistor on these amplifiers instead of simply just rebiasing it. Well, Johnny. The reason is the screen current is way too high. If you simply just rebias the amp to cool the tubes down, your plate voltage is going to go up, your screen voltage is going to go up, and both those currents are going to go up too. So the real culprit here, as in a lot of amplifiers, is the screen current. So I've got a little demonstration set up here for you to show you why I do this. This meter is going to have your voltages on it. The fluke is going to have plate current on it. The little guy here is going to have your screen current. Now, our specimen here is actually another Blues Junior that a customer brought in for my basic mod. So while it's here, it gives me a perfect opportunity to to address this question that uh, people are so insistent upon. So, here's the story. Right now, at the current time, there's 36 mils plate current. That's plate current only on the output tubes. At idle, we have 3.8 milliamps, almost four. Okay. Now, here's the thing. That's at idle. When you run the signal up on this, there we go. We're halfway up. We've got 14 milliamps. Okay, now let's walk you through some numbers. An EL84 has a screen dissipation of 2 watts. Absolute maximum is 4. With new tubes, I highly recommend staying away from that 4 watt maximum. So, like I said, we've done a little bit of figuring here just for your benefit. We've got 307 volts on the screens. At 2 watts dissipation, that means maximum dissipation should be 6.5 mils. Now, we've already shown we're going up here about 15. That's double. All right. So, like I say, if you just change the bias here without correcting your screen current, you're not going to be helping much. Also, in these amps, they use the old school version of 100 ohm screen grid resistors for current limiting, which really doesn't limit a whole lot. Uh, that's what Vox and Marshall and other people used to use years ago. So, 
Where am I getting my information from? A tube manual. You know, the things that uh, the tube manufacturers wrote years ago that manufactured tubes. You know, pre-Google. So, now, back to where we were. So I showed you what happened here. Like I say, we have four mils of current per screen at idle. Like I say, max should be about six and a half mils. And we're way above that. About double. So, okay. I've clipped in my new screen supply resistor that I usually use, which is 10K. I'm bumping up from 2.2K. Well, yeah, and, you know, by the way, yeah, looks like a spaghetti incident in here. Anyway, so what that has done, it has dropped our screen voltage. From 307 to 268 volts. On the other hand, our plate voltage has gone up to 446. Okay? Now, let's go back down here. Let's look at our plate current. Our plate current has dropped to 19 mils. That's actually a little bit cold. I like to see 22 there. But, that is from changing that resistor. Now, here's the fun part. We are now at 1.9 milliamps at idle. Okay, we're going to crank it up. 6.3, 5.6, 5 5.8. Flat out, we're drawing just under 6 milliamps per tube on each screen. Remember, yeah, we were looking at roughly uh, six and a half mils maximum. So we are way back within our limits of that tube. Happy tube, all right? So there, that's the reason I do that. The screen voltage drops down, makes the tube run within its limits. So hopefully that will uh, clear up some of the confusion of why I do this and end some of the questions. Actually, not even questions, they're actually uh, berated comments. Like I say, I learned to do this stuff years ago you know, with facts and numbers and calculations, not regurgitated form information. You have to redesign, re-engineer at times to take care of problems. Been doing it for a long time. So there, I'm going to get back to the crux of this job. I've got a handful of parts here I'm going to put in here. Uh, and do my basic mod on this amplifier for some stabilization and uh, reliability factors. He'd uh, recently had it to a, another tech that replaced all the tubes, did a couple other little things, uh, but left all this other stuff. So, this actually solves part of the headroom problem in this amplifier because your screens aren't hitting the wall. Your screens are actually your throttle for your output tubes. So when you're biased way too hot to start with, this amp is actually biased into class A, coming out of the factory. When you're biased too hot to start with, and you're running your screens at double dissipation, the amp has no headroom. It has no place to go. So, there you go. 
answering questions. Hope that helps somebody out a little bit. Clears up some, uh, well, <laughs> clears up some issues. So, till next time, play nice. I'll see you later.